in the House, I hope they will do it. But with Republicans controlling the Senate, there is no guarantee we will succeed. What we need is Walmart, the largest private sector employer in this country, to take a bold step forward and say that all of their employees should live with dignity. That's Bernie Sanders confronting Walmart over minimum wage, advocating that the retail giant should pay its workers at least $15 an hour. Let's talk minimum wage and much more with our special guest today, Stanley Druckenmiller, who is the CEO of Duquesne Family Office. Uh, Stan, you saw what Bernie had to say. You were watching this week as it was coming out, and you sent us an email because it got you a little fired up. What do you think about it? Well, first of all, on the minimum wage, we just had a discussion about innovation, um, we didn't, we didn't go into the cloud, and to me, the choice is it's not minimum wage versus a wage, it's minimum wage versus no wage. And if you want to hurt workers with what's going on with the alternatives with technology, jack the minimum, minimum wage up enough and you'll, you'll have job losses as a result, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But the thing that really enraged me that Comrade Sanders said was, <laughs> His, his comment about charter schools. I've spent the better part of my life, one of the, the great joys of my life was, was meeting Jeff Canada. Um, it's funny, I, w I was talking to Fiona last night. To have met Jeff Canada and Ken Langone and have them both in my life for over 30 years, I mean, what a privilege and what luck. But Getting back on topic, when, when he says he's against charter schools, I know the man just doesn't care about inequality. All he cares about power, because that is disruptive to the African-American community who prefers this. And the only way you get out of inequality is with education at the early level and giving everybody on this, on this, in this country a shot. And Believe me, this myth about pulling up your bootstraps and, you know, I'm going to make it, that's fine for 90, 95 percent of the population. But there are communities out there where these kids have no shot because the public schools are just so terrible, they're never going to be able to compete in our economy. And for Sanders, I assume he's in the pocket of the teachers unions. I don't know why he said it. But how in the world can you be against charter schools if you're serious about the inequality issue. And we should tell people about the work you've done in Harlem. How long have you been there? Well, I've been there, I met Jeff in 1993, but it's, it's Jeff's work, it's not mine. Uh, but we're, th we're serving uh, 13,000 kids and 25,000 families in 100 blocks of central Harlem. Um, we've moved the needle on every single metric. And Becky, if you just even drive up there, and I showed you pictures of 25 years ago. You won't, you, you won't even believe what's happened in the community. Our, our biggest problem is gentrification, which is a high-class problem relative to what we're looking at. And um, what's really cool is the Harlem Children's Own Model, which, by the way, Jeff invented, not me, is being replicated in communities all over the country. Uh, Obama's Promised Neighborhood started it. So we're not just affecting like 13,000 kids up there now. It's becoming a nationwide thing, and I think it's one of the answers, one, um, to, the whole, to the whole inequality issue. So it's, it's, it's very exciting. When you see hundreds of millions of dollars poured into a system like the Newark school system um, without really decent results to show for any of that, what do you think? It broke my heart. but. You know, I, I hate to say it uh, because I know, I know you're going to have viewers who passionately disagree, but I'm just not a believer in government being the most effective actor. And this whole tax debate is interesting because I understand, I really do understand why people want higher taxes and they think that's the solution to inequality. But you also need to understand I'd much, much rather have a Jeff Canada implementing programs and use his talents through private sector donors and donors that hold his organization accountable rather than letting the government 
Uh, just to be clear, you think that's a solution for the 5% of communities where you're not getting decent public schools, correct? You don't think that this is something? I mean, I'm a, I'm a pro product of the public schools for most of my life. My mom was a public school teacher. My oh, kids are in public are, schools. We are in the public schools yeah. in yeah. Harlem. Yeah. We're not. One of the big misperceptions about Harlem Children's Zone is we're a charter school network. Mm -hmm. A, that's a small piece of what we do up there. We have baby college. Um, we have pre-K. We have employment and technology centers. You know, basically, from cradle to college, we're all over these kids and all over the process. But we deeply, deeply believe in public schools. Um, so that's not, that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm just saying that there are kids that need a shot, and it cannot be done just through charter schools. And by the way, if they're charter schools, that are not performing, they should be shut down.